Hello there, I'm Tim and he got turned back at the border and this is how to murder feet, uh, rambling with rambling. I'm talking quite quietly because it's uh, 5.39 in the morning uh, and that over there is the campsite I've stayed at and no one else is up yet. I slept badly, the tent as usual. Uh, and here we are in North Wales, land of the unseen sky, uh, with actually, to tell a lie, quite a uh, fortuitous break in the weather. This is my second attempt at this weekend hike. Uh, last weekend I was um, going to give it a go and there was a life-changing amount of weather on the way so I decided not to bother. So here we are this weekend instead. Uh, so the plan here today is, oh hang on, technical thing coming up here. Quite an aggressive style. So the plan today is to climb Brecon Beacon. No, not Brecon Beacon. Da, no, no, did that one already. No, this is Mount Snowdon. Well, that up there is anyway. That's that's one of the uh, side shoulders of it. I'm going around the corner and up the hill. It's a uh, quite an adventurous program today. It's uh, seven hours there and back apparently. Now, I thought I'd make an early start because uh, around three this afternoon uh, a further life-changing amount of weather's due. Now, I don't want to get caught on the top of there during that because this is the sort of mountain that will kill people. So. Uh, Yes, more later when I find some flat ground. <sighs> when I said flat bit, I mean that's obviously wildly optimistic. Um, Flattish, you know. This is quite nice. This is the Nan Gwint Reservoir. Valley, lake thing. I don't know. Blah, 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 Klingon joke here. Um, yeah, it's lovely though. It's all very Lord of the Rings country up here. Hopefully there won't be any more Hobbit-related flashbacks on today's trek. You can watch the sun come up over the, over the hills there, into the valley. Lovely. There's the campsite just down there somewhere still. Still in sight. Yeah, splendid stuff. Glass smooth, dark, dark waters. I'm on a, I'm on a little promontory here, suitably photogenic. Hello. Right. So let's have a look at the map. I bought a map this time, go me. Prepared for, well, you know, getting lost at least. So let's try and focus on that a bit. That's maybe focusing, hard to say. Anyway, I am uh, about there, I think. There's the campsite. Today's adventure involves tracking along the bottom of the valley here to the start of what's known as the Watkin Path, which goes up through here, around the corner through all these disused quarries and things, then goes up there. And up there, and up there, and up there, and to Snowdon, Yif, Yif Widder, or whatever you call it. Uh, you would far, possibly. And no, you're not mistaken, that is a train station on the very top. As my uh, co-host and colleague kept informing me, there is a train that just goes straight to the top. Trouble is, the train goes, like, all the way over here and about 10 miles off that way. So even if I did get to the top, bottle out and want to take the train down, that would put me about 20 miles away from my campsite. So, a bit of a non-option today. So these contour lines, I don't know if you can see the zoom clear, clearly enough, but uh, it was a bit of a challenge today. I mean, the route is essentially 12 miles on foot as, as, the, uh, as the flat piece of paper goes. Um, but there is a certain degree of contours on that map, you can see. So the one down at the campsite says 79, and the one up on the top summit there says uh, 105, 1085. So that is a climb of about a thousand meters. That's meters, not feet, I had to double check which makes it quite a technical challenge throughout the day. Watkin Path Guide on your Visit Snowdonia type website says it can be done in about seven hours there and back, plus an extra hour or so walking along the lakeshore. So we'll see. It's the altitude that worries me. I mean, Snowdon was all right. That was, that was relatively easy going, although I did have to stop and have a bit of a break halfway up once or twice. But that, well, the car park was 400 metres up and the top's 800 metres, so I only actually climbed 400 that time. Today I'm doing a full thousand. So, but I've got a bag full of all sorts of, like, you know, sticking plasters and that little whistle thing you blow when you're dying of exposure to take your mind off dying of exposure. Uh, I've got cereal bars and things in there as well. I should be all right. Two litres of water today. Hydration important. Um, yeah. Daunting. I came in yesterday on the road and I saw the, the, the proper mountain side. Oh, look, you can see the sun just glinting off the tops there now. The sunrise, <laughs> early dawn. I saw it coming in on the road and I had a bit of a hysterical panic attack when I saw just how physically imposing the damn thing is in real life. You can see it quite clearly on the road in on the A5. And um, yeah, 
<laughs> but you know, I'm here now and it took me about five hours to drive here, so I'm damned if I'm not going to give it a go. So yeah, that'll be an interesting day, one way or another. Lots to see on the way, I'm sure. There's fantastic, majestic scenery, which is only getting more impressive when the sun comes up and you can actually see it. No idea what these surrounding mountains are called. Uh, thousand metres, that is a proper mountain, that. I mean, I was having an hour, is Brecon Beacon a mountain or a hill? But I don't think anyone's going to deny this thing. That's not even it, that, that you can see up there through the trees. I'll give you a proper gander at it when we get around the corner on the Watkin Path, which is over yonder hill, that, that far end of the lake. It's a well-marked trail. I'm not anticipating getting lost, although the guide says that there are parts where I'm going to have to scramble across a loose scree. So, uh, yeah, this is clearly uh, a two-pano chocolate problem. So I'm going to have some more breakfast uh, and then uh, press on, try and get to the, the start of the path, which should be the, uh, the first bit. I mean, just getting here has been quite, uh, quite roxy, quite, quite hilly and uh, breakneck. So um, this is just wandering along the lake shore. So uh, more food. See you later. Look at that. Of course, the problem with the uh, recent inclement weather I was driving down through mostly is it's made the mountain rather soggy, which means I've got to see a lot of this, I imagine. That's the path. Uh, need to get across without drowning, falling on my ass, getting soaked, etc. Let's hope it's not so uh, frothy on the path once we're up on the mountain. Might put the phone away for this bit, probably need both hands. Well, either I've uh, lost the path or paths mean something totally different in Wales. Because uh, <laughs> I'm just scrambling along a, a, a landslide scree slope along the edge of the lake. Um, which is great, good start. I suspect I probably have lost the path, mind you. Still got time on my side, so I'm not up yet. Uh, is hard going. I mean, if I don't break my ankle on this before I even reach to the reach the start of the proper path, I'll be surprised. <sighs> hard going. So yes, yeah, already lost. Uh, whoever had that on the sweepstake um, under one hour. Okay, well done you. Uh, I better put my phone away because I really do need both hands for this. Ah. <sighs> There we go, sunrise. Just completely blowing out the uh, white balance on the phone there. Fantastic. Ah, and I've, all been up, I've already been up and at it for an hour. Wakey wakey, slug of beds. So it turns out that was the path, um, which, yay, not lost, but also, oh, if that's what counts as a path on this map, I got a long day ahead of me. Ah, good. So, a, bit, a little bit of easier going now. Let's talk about trousers. Here we are, proper hiking trousers. Because I've had a bit of stick about uh, about my previous leg wear for these trips. Apparently, work, mountaineering in denim is not a thing. So, um, uh, we've got proper trousers, which in the event of emergency, the lower section detaches and can be ejected, giving me shorts, uh, whether I want them or not. So uh, hopefully I won't have to subject you to that today. It's just as well, because all this uh, knee high, ferns and dew is uh, yes yeah, it's actually soaking with dew and rainfall from yesterday so i've got wet legs anyway so it didn't really didn't matter still these are lighter more pockets uh probably dry quicker too hopefully they're warmer too not quite so heavy when they're wet or chafy chafy's a word we don't like either so yeah look i've got a shirt too with like roll up sleeve things that have a little loop strap and stuff oh i'm proper hiking today went out and bought all the gear so obviously I know what I'm doing oh god it's all soaking this takes me back to Nam. oh yeah look a wall a wall civilization ah oh, still by this little lake which is nice and all but not really showing me any progress so I need to step it up try and get to the trailhead speak to you soon oh god it's a lake Ah, thank God, some kind of trail, some sort of road. Well, you know, road, relative, Wales, all that. Yeah, so I just came out through there somewhere. I mean, against all probability, I'm still on the path, so go me. Ah, let's talk about socks, socks today. Trying something new. You can't see this because they're tucked away inside, but I'm wearing two pairs of socks. But twice the, the sockage. 
The idea being uh, some sort of wickable inner layer, which is uh, technical speak for it makes the water go outside rather than in. Uh, and then an outer, outer thermal one as well. Lightweight thermal outer, tiny, tiny lightweight inner one. And I suppose the idea being is that instead of rubbing against my foot, the socks rub against each other. We'll see. <laughs> also got two spare pairs for replacement when I get to the top. And if I've learned anything about this kind of madness is that coming down is harder work than going up. So I probably want some fresh socks for that. Majestic scenery. Lovely place. And the sound of cascading waterfalls, always in earshot. Again, slightly worrying. Uh, cloud base, hard to say from here. I'll have a better idea of it. I mean, the good thing about the Watkin path is that once we're on the path proper, we'll be able to see the summit from pretty much the whole route. So uh, we'll be able to judge conditions and um, plod onwards to my inexorable doom as we go. Uh, Cause you know, stubbornness, turning back, travel this far to get here, etc. I think I'll be all right till about three. If I'm still on the top by three, I've probably got problems coming my way, but uh, it's about, oh, I don't know. I can't tell what the time is because it's in camera mode, but uh, probably about 6.30ish maybe. So we've got a whole day. And I think seven hours will see me probably most of the way down to the, back down to this valley before any kind of serious weather happens. Oh, is that it? Is that what am I looking at? Could be. Hard to say from here, or it might be another one tucked around the corner. I really ought to know, to be honest. I'll have to consult the map again. Anyway, you put your feet up and uh, I'll come back to you in a minute, or, 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 or 50. Morning. Is that the big hill? Can you tell me, where am I? No? Okay, thank you. See you later. Yeah, I'm reckoning that's the one. Yeah, so the path goes sort of up the near bit and then up the right of it and then zigzags to the left across that dark brown bit at the top, which apparently is just loose scree. Then zigzags far to the left to that little hammock, which always zooms good enough, and then from there onto the summit, which presently is not covered in cloud. I mean, all the webcams I was looking at in this, this leading up week had it basically just grey when pointing at that, so uh, hopefully I'll be up in time to see some sights from the top. And that one's not it. No. Okay, good. Ah, onwards, onwards, onwards. More sheep. It's like they've run the place. Dear God, what was I thinking? <laughs> That's terrifying. Ah, oh, God. Yeah, this looked like a good idea on paper. It's miles. I feel very insignificant. Well, that takes the biscuit. I've been walking for an hour and I've just reached a nearer campsite to the start of the trail. Should have done my homework. <laughs> oh well. The one I'm in is very pleasant and quite reasonably priced. Yeah. So the downside of being in Wales is that Wales is largely made up of valleys. I'm not even going to try the pronunciation accent type joke, but uh, these valleys tend to be made up of, I think it's granite. I'm not precisely sure. It's, it's certainly a rock that does very little to uh, help the conduction of radio waves, which means I've had a solid zero bars since I left the A5. And I don't imagine there's much 4G up there. Which is fine, you know, okay, can't make any calls. Can't make any calls of the rescue type nature, which means I'm basically down to my, my, my brightly coloured whistle if I get in trouble. Also, it means I can't tweet from up there, which, you know, social media celebrity that I am, um, mean, is, is a hardship. But a particular hardship in that I agreed with John that I'd tweet when I was down safe so he didn't send an internet rescue. Um, which I'm now not able to be able to do. So I'm just going to have to not get into any trouble, really. Let's have a little look at that again. Yeah, no trouble. Trouble bad. <sighs> Planning. Still, what's the alternative? Some sort of satellite phone. There you go. 
Some picturesque tracking scenery shotage for you. So it's official, I do have the smallest tent in Wales. Good job we're not claustrophobic. I think it was about 12 degrees last night. I didn't even, I couldn't even zip the sleeping bag up, it was so hot. Still, that may just be me. And some weird freak of biology, which means I generate far more wattage of heat than most, most human beings. I mean, I'm already up to rolled up sleeves and it's only 6.30. Yeah, feeling good though, feeling good, confident. We can do this. I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, like so. And don't look up. Ah. I'll probably be fine. Anyway, this will be the Watkin Path coming up soon, which means uh, starting in earnest. Uh, rather complicated style thing. Let's climb over the gate instead. Hold on. No, you haven't tuned in to some sort of audio noise porn by mistake. This is genuine physical exertion. AMR? I have no idea. Ah. So we're on the Watkin path proper now. It's just quite wide, you could get a jeep up here, no problem. To a point anyway. I think that might be the point there. That, I'm looking straight ahead, let's try a zoom. Looks like a carved staircase. I imagine Shedob lives at the top. God, it's pathetic. Here I am in the great outdoors, a primal Welsh wilderness, and my only cultural reference is Lord of the Rings. Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, at that. Uh, speaking of films, if this is looking familiar, then you might be recognising the Khyber Pass from Carry On Up the Khyber. I can't see it myself, but then I haven't seen it in a long time. But apparently they came up here to film all the outdoor shots for that. I don't know. Doesn't look much like Afghanistan to me, but... Uh, I think if you're a Carry On fan, you just don't really care. You're not here for the uh, landscape verisimilitude. You're here for the innuendo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like the clouds have made an early start. Uh, as long as it doesn't actually rain, I don't care. I can still see the top, so. That's interesting. I don't know if you can see this with my feeble zooming. Just on the top there, where that shoulder, that elbow, there's a stone wall running along the hillside. And that's just rocks and gorse. It's about 600 metres up. And yet because we're human beings, and this is what we do, somebody has lugged a ton of rocks up there and piled them all in a big long line and gone, that bit is mine and that bit is not. I mean, if you're letting your sheep loose up on here and look, the hillside's dotted with them, I don't suppose it matters particularly which side of the bloody stone wall they're on or whose land they're grazing on, but people are like that, I guess. Very territorial as a species. This bit's mine and that bit's not. Ah, so yeah, starting to get a bit worried about that staircase. That looks like a pain in the ass. Multiple stops to get up that if that is the route. I'll have to check the map, make sure I'm still on some kind of path. I mean, this is a bit of a clue so far, like in the path so far. Even so, by Welsh standards, this is a relative plateau, and I'm still wheezing a bit. <laughs> so, let's hope we don't get any cardiac episodes on the way up, because, as previously mentioned, can't really call for help. Also, it's rather early and no one else is on the trail yet, so it could be hours before I'm discovered, if at all. I reckon we'll see a lot of people up here around lunchtime, but hopefully by lunchtime I'll be well on my way back down. Don't want to hang around for that rain. Yeah. Crease, so indeed. So there we go. Um, I don't know, I think I might be here. Hard to tell. That's the car park. Come around that bend there, yeah. I think so. Oh well, keep following the path. I'll get the proper map out in a minute and have a proper look. Yeah, at some point I have to have a, quite a steep climb to do. <sighs> oh, 
marvellous. It's the view that makes it worthwhile. Not sure I should be filming it and putting it on the web, to be honest. It feels like spoilers. <laughs> should come up here yourselves. Ah, right, let's press on and then I think I probably ought to stop and have a drink or something. Morning. Is this the Watkin Path? No. Yeah, that way. All right. Lead on. I'm not actively harassing this sheep, it just happens to be on the trail ahead of me. Good hill climber, your sheep. I wonder if I can convince it to carry my bags. So he's in a bit of a bind, really. I'm coming up behind him, but he can't really go left or right, so he's going to end up going all the way to the top, probably. He, she, whichever. I feel bad, really. Mind you, I expect overtaking it will freak it out. Come by, come by. No dog. Here. All right, I'm going to negotiate passage. I'll talk to you later. Oh, selfie mode. No, wrong. Hang on. There we go. Better. <sighs> Look at that. Ah. So I've uh, consulted a sheep that actually knows what it's talking about, and it turns out I was looking at the wrong mountain. So I've gone round the corner and oh. Yeah, that one there, I think. I'm pretty almost certainly sure that one's Snowden. Ah, I probably ought not to be allowed up here, to be honest. Ah, still, <laughs> you know, just because I just when I thought I was getting a bit too close to uh, my objective too early. Behold, objective updated. Ah, there's buildings up there, ruined bits of mine or something. Fascinating. Wouldn't like to try this in the winter. Imagine the snow makes it quite interesting. <coughs> Bit of uh, artificial stuff there. Some sort of quarry, slate, I don't know. Granite, <laughs> toffee, who knows. Ah. More climbing, yay! Jesus, now I am terrified. Unless that one's it. Huh. Well, I just hope the path's well marked, that's all. Sweaty lens. <sighs> well, you join us for another rousing round of which mountain is that? And so far. And my third and final guess is that one over there. So, not that one. No, that one, which was my second guess. And not actually the one that turns out to be behind me, which is my first guess. So, yeah, quite confusing country up here. So I've stopped to have a bit of a breather and some water. And check the actual solution. So, let's see. Um, so there's the campsite I should have camped at. And round that. Is that zooming? Is that focusing at all? Oh well, you have to take my word for it. So around there, then up through that path there, which I thought was the final plateau, <laughs> and onto this section here. There's a small bridge there which I've just crossed, very picturesque, where it says Ford. That's up ahead, I think. Some trees and a small hut ruined thing there. Ruined hut, small square. Yeah, so I have to go up through there, between those two low rocks there, round to the right, around the back. And then long straight incline. Then some terrifying uh, scree scrambling up there, then a really sphincter winking double switch back on some very steep contours. And then along the ridge, 
then the uh, loose scree no path scramble I think and then back to the train station and uh, yeah there's our first clouds so uh, yeah already not not anticipating great views from up there but it's it's the challenge of the thing and I've already had some majestic views as well very uh, sort of alpine tundra sort of ter country here let's just de-zoom that there you go I would not like to try this in the winter but people do and I'll just show you my uh, my map comes with a cheerfully optimistic photo on the cover which theoretically is representative of this whole region um, yeah don't know about that and of course the blokes doing the blinking Usain Bolt yeah yeah I'll pick summer any day thank you so I'm just going to sit and dawdle here for five, ten minutes, maybe fifteen, even. Why not spoil myself? Because I don't want to push too hard and kill myself. Because that's a long way to go still. According to the wiggly brown lines on my map, I'm at 300 meters here. So we've done 300 out of a thousand, <laughs> and I suppose it will really be 2,000 because coming down is just as hard work. Oh look, massive cloud of midges has found me. Splendid. I'm going to frantically swat at them with my map. Still feeling good though, enjoying myself. It's nice to be out. That's the competition. See, they're not having to stop. Morning. Going straight up the top. Yeah, good luck. Hope you've got the weather gear for it. Keep up. Don't leave the party. Never split the party. I've got a party of one, you see, much easier. Blimey, they're making good headway, actually. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to get caught in a log jam behind them on the steep bit. Ah, oh, I'm eating alive by midges here. I'm going to need to crack on and get away from this water. It's attracting them, clearly. Morning. Ah, damn midges. There we go, the ruins of Winterfell. Scene of much tragedy. Mind you, I'm doing this in midsummer, so you know, no problems with winter is coming, etc. Oh, I don't know, some Shepherd's Crofty or my slate quarry office or something. There's quarries up ahead. I keep saying slate, I've no idea why. I don't think it's slate. Mind you. I did a year of mine, a mineral and mining engineering degree and uh, I still can't tell the difference between most rocks. All I really learned on that year was that there are four types of mineral. Gold, diamonds, iron ore and rock. <sighs> Much like in MMOs to be honest. Not seeing any blue sparkles in the sides of these rocks so I shan't be attempting to punch any of them out of the side of the hill. Oh come on sheep, keep moving. Oh, you really want to stop for lunch now? You've got a whole day yet. Oh, well, little and often. Little and often is indeed the advice I was uh, reading up on on the various mountain survival safety guides that were linked from various uh, Visit Snowden websites. I've done my research. Cereal bars. Got, a got quite a few of those with me. And chocolate. Or, or, or like sweets. Like um, Jelly Babies, Midget Gems, that sort of thing. The combination of both, you've got quick release energy and slow release energy with your like oat bars, cereal bars, that sort of thing. And a combination of those throughout the day keep you going. Probably gonna use about three to four thousand calories getting up here today, rather than the usual two thousand you get a sedentary office rest type. So I've got supplies, and as I said, two litres of water. And little and often rather than just you know one massive meal at midday and then nothing else i've got some sausage rolls as well because you know i'm only human <sighs> yeah still on the path this is the easy bit still this keeps going around the corner and up a bit until about 400 and then i think the remaining 600 is back breaking scramble so i'm not really looking forward to to be honest but you know it's all part and parcel of the gig Kind of one without the other. Well, unless you just take the train to the top, of course. Ask me about what sort of idea that was at the end of the day. 
<sighs> temperature temperature wise something worth bearing in mind is that you lose a degree centigrade for every hundred meters of altitude so basically it's going to be 10 degrees cooler at the top of there than it was down in the car park and the down in the car park and uh, campsite saying about 16 degrees today so we're probably looking what with wind chill as well only three three to six degrees at the top of there so i've got gloves and hat and everything as well as the, the trusty anorak so i should be all right i did have an extra jumper in my bag but it was too bulky and i couldn't bring it so i may yet freeze to death but i'll tell you what this exercise soon warms you up my trousers are nearly dry hooray so yeah be prepared and i am <laughs> uncharacteristically Oh, I can't see the top anymore. Let's go around this latest thing. Oh, hello. Is this the Gladstone Rock? I think so. I read about this. William Gladstone, ancient Prime Minister of 18... <laughs> did a thing here, gave a speech. First ever public footpath in the UK? Something like that. Let's have a look. There's a, there's a stone here with some writing on. Let's see what it says. September 13th, 1892, upon this rock, the Right Honourable W.E. Gladstone MP, when Prime Minister for the fourth time and 83 years old, addressed the public of Erie upon justice to Wales, the multitude sank Krimic hymns and land of, the land of my fathers, publicly dedicated by Sir Edward and Lady Watkin, June 1893. Well, and it's in Welsh on the top there, look. I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Yeah. I'm still doing quite a do. Everyone up here in their top hats and frock coats, wheezing their asses off, staggering around with opium withdrawal and whatever else they did in those days. Splendid. So I stand on the top and do a speech? I can't even, I don't even know the, the, the tune to Land of My Fathers. You can find that probably elsewhere on YouTube. Me, I'm just going to sit down and puff for a bit. <sighs> Ah. Welcome back to the planet Anthrodrax 17 Prime. Ah. Actually, I think this is probably a bit too hard work for even the BBC quarry. I think they've probably got stuff up on here, a sea level in Cardiff. Ah. So, time for another round of which mountain is that? And I thought it was that one. I think it might now be that one. Yeah, the one with the literally tearing the clouds open as they drift over the top of it. It looks incredible. <sighs> Mystical. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> something out of a legend. Something, something, something. Knights of Snowdonia gag. Something, something. Muse. Yeah. <sighs> Too knackered to make gags. <sighs> Long way to go then. I'm just going to keep following the path, frankly, because <laughs> I've clearly got no idea myself. Every time I see a pointy bit, I think that's it, and it's not. There's more. There's definitely that one. There's nothing above it. <sighs> Probably reaching around 400 metres. Long way to go. Better start conserving the phone battery too. I did bring a power pack. No, I didn't bring the power pack. I bought one, but I didn't bring it. Got a charging cable in the car, but I can't remember where I'll run down and grab it. And I left my sunglasses in the car too. So yeah, not as prepared as I'd like. Ah, Got to keep moving ahead of the midges. Ah, it keeps it keeps not being sunrise yet. I keep going in valley shadow. Had about eight sunrises so far today. Ah, still going. Don't know, 450, 500 meters up, something like that. I haven't seen anyone at all. It's about 8:30, I think, something like that. Again, I can't see the clock while the phone's recording, so. <laughs> Ah, I've seen wet footprints of at least one person gone up before me. Medium-sized adult male, possibly, hiking boots. Perhaps two hours, an hour, maybe. Obviously started from that nearer campsite. And I've seen, right on the top, tiny moving specks. That, like, you know, people stood on a thing and gawping. So I think that is definitely the, uh, my final answer in this game of which mountain is that? 
And to get there, I need to go up and zigzag onto this ridge line at the top, and then some scrambling diagonally across that, and then zigzagging back across to the top. Uh, you can just about make out the sort of path, scramble, whatever. Quite a way to go to get up there though, some serious business climbing where I could do about 150 metres in, in, in about 150 metres. It's, it's a 45 degree incline in some of it. So uh, yeah, serious business climbing. Uh, and I just got one bar of E on my phone. <laughs> so I suspect from the top there's probably like 3, 4 and 15 G at 4 bars or something. But down in this valley, not a lot. Mind you, on the plus side, this valley is extremely sheltered. I've not got barely a breath of wind on the way down up, up this bit. I imagine once I hit that ridge line on the top, I shall start to feel the cold a bit. I'm going to have to dig in the bag for the gloves and things. Yeah. But so far, doing all right. Had a, had a quick jelly baby stop. Prescribed myself nine jelly babies. Because, <laughs> you know, why not? Could be my last meal. And I had a trekking bar thing too. Uh, banana Blast, which tasted... Frankly, a bit like sick, but uh, I've got some other flavours in the bag, so <laughs> it's it's not a bad flavour. It's about power and, and stuff. I was talking about the idea of those energy gels you can buy, but the Mountain Survival Guides said that was a bad idea because they tend to dehydrate you a bit. So, yeah, enough procrastinating into the phone. i got to push on. <sighs> there we go, look at that, look at that view. It's the sea. I think somewhere in the far horizon there's Aberystwyth. So uh, there we go, some context. 8.30, 8.20 or so, yep, just checked. So let's have a look. Focus. Don't know, no. Too, too, oh well, take my word for it again. So along the, along the Watkin path, I'm just reading contour lines. It looks like we're on the 600 line, uh, which is good more than halfway up. So we're on the bit where it's looping around there and then going to go back up and on itself onto the ridge line at the top, which you can see go up there and up to there and uh, just spin right around. Along there and up to the top there. I'm definitely sure that's the mountain I'm aiming at now. Well, if it isn't, that's the one I'm climbing anyway. So, you know, tough if it isn't Snowden. Uh, yeah, feeling all right. The old leg's aching. I think I can do it though. Just have to stop when I need to to uh, recover. Take the occasional break here and there. Try not to power all the way up. But uh, yeah, definitely worth it. I'm feeling the cold now, although the sun still hasn't risen on this uh, deep, steep valley. So uh, not. I mean, it'll be on my back as I'm climbing up there. So there are two places where I'm likely to die. This bit here, leading up to the ridge, which is very steep and will probably just cause my heart to burst. Um, and then that bit sort of halfway up the diagonal line there you can just sort of make out uh which is a sideways crab wise scramble across a lot of loose scree and not very well defined path uh i did actually street view this some some nutter brought us backpack with a street view camera up this path so you can actually follow along using google google earth and google maps um and it looked pretty pretty, pretty dicey from that view i can tell tell you and then once we get to the side that little sort of sticky out your lump in the middle that goes up to the top so yes, uh, 8.30, I started at 6, so I've been going two and a half hours, another hour to the top. Mm, don't know, I'm reckoning two probably. So probably I'm taking longer than it says, but uh, that's all right. It's only 8.20 now, if I'm on the top in about an hour or two, that's still only 10.30 at the latest. Half an hour to have a good old gawp around, panoramic shots, etc. Visit the gift shop. <laughs> there is a restaurant up there with the, in the little train station. Uh, where I expect to be outraged at the price of cappuccino. Uh, and then back down again, and another three hours from 10.30, so 11, three hours from there, we'll be about two o'clock down into the low valley by the time the uh, apocalyptic weather arrives for three. So uh, yeah, I think, I think we're going to survive today, which is nice. <laughs> anyway, see how long it takes me to get up this bit. Many stops. Well, fitter than I thought anyway. So, um, that's the, the difficult bit done. Uh, the the uh, cardiac scramble. I'm probably on the lateral ridge top path now, which goes off along there. And as you can see, <laughs> my luck's holding as usual. 
uh, the top is entirely in cloud now and of course now we're actually level with it you can actually see the scramble I'm going to need to do and of course back down in the valley it was all foreshortened by perspective and angle and stuff and it actually looks much <laughs> much more steep than I thought so that is going to be a challenge and of course halfway up it I go into the clouds still that happened on Brecon so I'm not overly worried about it clouds are generally quite part permeable so uh, yes so far so good lost internet reception again uh, look at that majestic and I've seen people look there's people climbing up on that one right up on the top there seem to know what they're doing let them get on with it not heard any survival whistles anyway <laughs> yeah whistle in fact all good that'll do me out here Distress flares, that's what I need. I was looking to commercially available distress flares. My Collins Gem SAS Survival Handbook says you should have some of those in your survival kit. And that was written by that Wiseman fellow who trains the SAS. Although it was written in the 80s, that edition, so perhaps, you know, the police and government are less enthusiastic about wandering hikers carrying explosives around with them all the time. Maybe it's glow sticks nowadays. Anyway. I get my breath back and then uh, prepare for some astonishing views off the top of this ridge line over the other side where we can see the miners track and and a load of other welsh name tracks alternate ways up from a different angle <sighs> there we go how's this for some terrifying vertigo yeah that's what we come up here for oh so that's north facing see the uh, lake something or other <laughs> And um, that path along the side there is one of the approaches from the north, the miner's track. Somewhere over the top of that low ridge of hills is a youth hostel. And that's another base of operations and starting place for this kind of expedition. In the far distance you can see the valley I came in on. That's the A4086, I think. It leads to the A5, which is your main uh, Birmingham to uh, Hollyhead Road. Yeah, they're still going up the side of that thing. I'm saying strictly to paths today, no off-piste off climbing for me. Well, it doesn't look too technical from this side though. Lots to grab onto. Chunky rock looks fairly solid. That's quite a sight from the top. Anyway, I'm going up the other one. Which you can't see because it's in the clouds. It's typical. Still, I've got, got half hour or so up there, so uh, hopefully we'll catch a break. Yes, yeah, so I'm now working along this ridge line behind me. With that kind of thing on the far side. Oh, I don't even know how high up I am. I haven't looked at the map. I'll have another look before we start the dangerous murder scramble. See you later. Yeah, making progress. You can just see the path where I've, uh, where I've been. A long way down. You can see the occasional person climbing up it as well. A tiny little black speck moving along. Oh, I'm being stalked. Hello. Good morning. Is this the Watkin path? No, it's gone. <laughs> it's hiding. Wow, I'm sure there's a sheep there. Oh, look, there is. Ninja. You coming up? Come on in. <laughs> oh, starting to get some sense of the uh, task ahead of me on the murder death scramble. <sighs> Kirith Ongol indeed. <sighs> yeah. If I make it up the top, the spider will be the least of my worries. So, uh, see, that's what Frodo should have done, just gone straight up the side of the mountain. And they're mucking around with stairs and spiders. Uh, another fallen warrior. See a lot of those up here. I'd like to think they're for navigation, but you never know. So there's a bloke coming up behind me with all the gear. <laughs> Got a hard hat, head torch, stick. So like he's wearing a fleece. I think he's got more of an idea of what's ahead than I have. Mind you, definitely feeling the weather, definitely feeling the temperature drop now. It's distinctly cooler up here, chilly, even. I mean, I'm working hard, so heat's, heat dissipation's not a problem. Uh, yeah, I might have to crack out the gloves and hat and coat and things in a minute. I think I'm definitely going to want the gloves for that. Gloves have got like uh, grippy surfaces on the palms. Might help me hang on and not die a bit better. Hey. 
Yeah. Very much enjoying this ridge line stuff there. Very spectacular. <sighs> That is insane. I mean, is that even a path? I mean, the map says it goes up that hill somewhere, so I guess that's it. But it's not going to be nice, uh, well laid paving slabs up there, I can tell you. This is all very pleasant. And then it changes. Yeah. Getting a bit worried about that. I mean, it's doable. Two blokes came the other way to go up that hill over there. So, I mean, people must go up and down it, but <laughs> how much skill do you need? Yeah. Well, can't say this isn't an adventure. So, uh, <laughs> It seems my disbelief is not unique. They've actually had to put a sign, yes, really. Watkin. Yeah. <laughs> just, in, just in case you get here and think, what? Putting the what in Watkin. But I can see two blokes coming down it as we speak. So, uh, there you go, look, movement. And they're not dead. So, going up's probably easier with balance and stuff. I mean, it looks just lo like loose scree. And if you come off of there, I mean, you know, nothing's going to stop you until you hit blinking the quarry down there. Sheesh. Well, I'm going to have to make some preparations, I think. Reek for cold weather and uh, mountaineering. Good. Mmm, banana. Doesn't taste great, to be honest. Looking forward to the peanut one. So I've checked the map. We are 800 meters up. The last 200 meters awaits. And I am not even going to attempt it until those blokes coming down have finished, because it just looks like a nightmare of loose scree and shale. So I'd rather, I don't have a hard hat. So uh, yeah, I'm going to wait for them to come down and pass and have a bit of a breather. Done well then, pleased with progress so far today. I forgot to check the time. <laughs> it's probably about 10-ish, maybe, half nine. So, uh, yeah. Still uh, checking stuff out. So we've got these, here are my gloves. They've got this sort of uh, grippy surface, which should help with rocks. And there's a beanie hat thing there, which is probably more appropriate than my weird cowboy rancher thing. And um, the uh, famous anorak, which is fast becoming a companion on all my adventures. Uh, yeah, that's just going to be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just sit here for a bit and think about what I'm about to do. Still, still no severe wind. It's quite quite cool. I suppose once I go over the top we'll feel it. But uh, intermittent clouds on the top, so I might get a bit of sunshine on the top. That'll be good. See the view. So I'm going to just sit here and try not to put these guys off as they come down. Mind you, they keep stopping for photos, so, you know, it could take a while. Mm, hasn't helped. <laughs> Stop it there. It's still blurry. Bear with me. Technical difficulties. This is my eyes. Hmm. There we go, I got it. Sweating, sweat on the lens. <coughs> so, uh, here I am, I'm all suited and booted. Got me hat, got me gloves. With the special grippy surface, uh, anorak's on. Uh, chap's already made a start up while I was sat there dawdling. 
So, um, yes, I'm going to have to uh, do this insane murder death scramble now. This is uh, the last 200 metres. Possibly the last 200 metres. Still, if you've got to go, it's what a spectacular place to go. Let's do a quick panorama. There we go, look at that. And there it is, somewhere up there, is a, is a train station and cafe. So, you know, <laughs> in the sky, as you do. So, um, yes, I'm going to have to put the phone away now in a secure pocket so it doesn't fall out and smash. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yes, it's been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been real, it really has. Um, speak to you at the top, hopefully. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> still can't believe it and I just did it. I live, I die, I live again. That was crazy. There are parts of that where the path just sort of vanishes really. And you're left to your own devices scrambling amongst just loose scree really. It's uh, right on the edge. Whew. I can imagine that is no fun at all um, in heavy rain. <laughs> Which means I need to be extra careful about departing soon enough. So that noise you might be able to hear is apparently a steam train. <laughs> Typical, really. Oh, look, a gap in the cloud. It was just fog when I got onto the top. And then just like that, suddenly, did a Let's have some panorama. I'm not even on the top yet. I've got a bit more to do. But I reckon the rest of it's relatively easy and well marked. Nothing quite as terrifying as uh, what I've just done. Uh, it's not easy. You've... <sighs> Well, I'd, I'd call it mountaineering, certainly. I don't know about rock climbing per se. Don't necessarily need ropes and whatnot, but you've already got to use your hands all the way up, certainly. Proper hands and knees climbing that. Yeah. I might have to check the map and see if there's a more convivial way down. This path down there, for example, might go to the other side of the main valley. I don't know yet. I've decided. So the worst bit's when you sort of... Oh, don't know what happened there. I think, I think I ran out of disk space on the camera, <laughs> on top of all my other problems. So anyway, I can't remember what I was whittering about. Ah, onward. Need to get to the top. And hopefully some of this uh, intermittent cloud gap might let me see an impressive view. Mind you, can, uh, can see pretty well from here. Ah, this is surreal. It's a train station. With cafe. Looks like there's a bit of a queue to get on the top. Amateurs. They've not suffered like I have. Little steam train. For those who just want a small slice of adventure. Oh. And yeah, I think they're the smart ones. Yeah. <laughs> Going off, gone through all that, and then you find yourself on a pavement concourse full of people with smartphones taking photos. And queuing to get onto the top bit. I mean, I'm gonna have to go stand on it, obviously, but uh, it's a little touristy. We go down here. Some sort of generator. Aha, another route. The last one was demolished and rebuilt because that was an eyesore. <laughs> ah, so this one blends in a little better. Ah. Ah, they're going to get my photos and queue at the top. Still a queue. I think you should only be allowed up there if you haven't used the train. 
So down there's the miners track as you're going up the mountain. You can see a lot of people moving around on that one. I guess that's the not suicidal dangerous one. I must have picked the crazy route with no people on it. <laughs> nice to not be in clown. It's all good. Yeah, this is all very pleasant. Mission achieved, etc. I need to really start heading down soon. I bought a small teaching aid to show you why. So this is Snowden. And this is Snowden after about half three. Point made. Yes, they had a gift shop, and yes, I brought a precious thing. So, decision time. I can uh, attempt the uh, scree slope of a thousand falls. Again, only going down this time, so less controlled. Oh, can try some new route along the ridge there and possibly down the side of the mountain there. I don't know. Likely, more likely to get lost that way. But more likely to die that way. There's quite a lot of people going up and down it as well. This may make for more uh, rubble and such. Hmm. Don't know. Because basically what's at the bottom of there is plain sailing. Along that ridge, there's a little bit down there, but that's all right, it's not too steep. Well maintained. That's an unknown quantity. Hmm. We'll take this one, try something new, an explored path, etc. Plus, that was very scary. Yeah, good call. Yeah, I survived the walking path, that's once enough for me. No chance of tempting fate. And look at this, much more spectacular. Jagged hillsides, and then on the other side, it's the valley I came up. Weather seems to be holding for now. I reckon if I'm down in that valley floor, which is where I end up anyway, uh, before three, I should be fine. I'll just get wet rather than washed off the side of a uh, precipice. Yes. See, I'm right along here. Knife edge ridge top with like fatal drops on either side. That's fine. It's the nature of the path itself, I think. Relatively wide, solid stone. Well marked. Yeah, much better. Quite impressive. A lot of uh, loose scree falling there. And you can see this sort of diagonal stripe strata of the rocks there. Something to do with how the earth folded. Never knew, never, never remembered enough geology. Impressive vista, though. So we go around that peak over there. Not that interesting getting to the top of it. There's a little path that goes around the side. Uh, and then down to that saddle there, and then I think there's a path down the side of the mountain there. Which basically put me back where we were this morning. With the sheep and the uh, playing guest of the mountain. And there's the route I went up. Wonderful. Ah, 700 metres and falling. It's nice. More of the vista and less of the uh, <laughs> terror. So, uh, yeah, this is a nice route. You can see it winding away ahead. Now I think down where that lake is, it cuts left and goes down into that valley there. Which is good. No idea on my ETA at the moment. Probably take me about two hours to get back to the campsite from here, maybe. 
Let's see. <laughs> Which will have me pretty much at home and dry by about three. I mean, I've seen a lot of people still going up. So either they've not paid much attention to the weather or the weather's changed. So yeah, they could be in for a, quite a hellish time. <laughs> they don't stay there, welcome. How do I know it's going to rain at three? Because the Met Office told me and they wouldn't lie to me. Ah, we really are in the sky here. A thousand metres up on there. 700 metres here. You can see all those clouds sort of scudding along. They are all at about a thousand metres up. Well, everything just vanishes over there. Fog coming in, perhaps. The wind is coming from that direction, so... Maybe, oh, maybe that's my three o'clock apocalyptic lightning. Hmm. Not that I wish anyone else on this mountain ill will, of course. Yeah. But I don't really do research. It'd be nice to be vindicated for once. <laughs> And like in this, it's all sort of gently rolling green hills that if I did fall over, I could probably stop myself rolling all the way off the edge. I'm taking it easy. Because going down doesn't leave you quite so heart-hammeringly out of breath and needing to pause and wait for the spots to go away so much. It's more of an agility exercise, as it's wear and tear on the old knees. Did a sock change on the top. It's feeling good. I think sock change and double socking. I think that's probably the clue. Key. I'm not sure what else to do after that if this doesn't work. Prosthetic feet, probably. We'll just get the train. Yeah. Splendid. Look at that. Massive rolling forest there, all creeping up the far sides of those mountains. Savage majesty. Those little farms and things down in the valley as well. I feel like man and nature are on equal footing out here. I live in Hampshire, where it's managed to within an inch of its life. Managed woodlands, managed farmland, rolling hills of wheat, barley, as far as the eye can see. Quite monotonous. Yeah, you know, I can't see very far. It's all forested hedges and no, no appreciable heights. Still, I wonder what I think if I lived here. Familiarity breeds contempt, they say. Maybe it's just enough to be somewhere else. So still as well. I was expecting it to be really windy up here today. I reckon I've got the weather completely wrong. I probably could have stayed up there for another five hours. Still, stick to the plan. Plus, to be honest, once you've visited the gift shop and queued at the uh, little Burger King type style cafe, um, not really much to do. Touched the bronze plaque on the top. Everyone else was touching it. Doesn't sound hygienic. Probably caught something. But no, it's just nice to be out, out and about. Somewhere different, somewhere else. Try and get out somewhere else as often as possible. Makes home seem more interesting too. <laughs> uh, it's clearly philosophy hour. I got more walking to do or I'm gonna get thundered to death. Ah, oh, take it all back. That wasn't particularly fun to come down. <laughs> Paths up there that bloke in the top is. And it's just rubble. Yeah, they've gone way wide and on the grass. Dog there, not too happy about the whole endeavour. Some sort of lassie style dog, I don't know what the breed's called. So, yeah, I could have whimpering. <laughs> you and me both. Anyway, look, the style, that means I'm on the right path. That the whole side of the mountain must have come off at one point. Unless the path was literally up that ridge there. Oh well, <laughs> down and safe. Let's press on. Ah, 
tiring a bit now. Long day. Yeah, five o'clock start. Hopefully I'll be so tired tonight it won't matter. Campsite's quite noisy, lots of people sitting around sitting around fires till like uh, till about eleven at night. And somebody brought a dog along that doesn't like other things, barks whenever it sees a thing. And then there was another dog of a similar disposition, half a camp away, and they had a good old fight. You know, now I think about it, was it actually a campsite or I found a traveller encampment? Hmm. Anyway, I'll have to ask. Uh, still descending. I think we're probably down to about 600 feet now, so metres. You will see all the little people on the top there, all queuing to have a crack at touching the plaque. Oh, I can't complain, I'm a tourist as well. Besides, what kind of hipster climbs all the way up there and then just sits in the cafe and then comes down again? You've got to go and touch the top bit. <sighs> so, hopefully we'll uh, get to some easy going soon, over the, probably over the brow of that hill with the people on it. Not the one in the distance. Not going up there. <laughs> Enough of mountains for one day. I just want to get back down safely and dry. Down there. Hmm. Disaster strikes. My kiwi, melon and strawberries burst. And now everything in my bag smells of kiwis. Yeah. Mind you, I think I can salvage most of the fruit. See? Let's don't teach about this kind of thing on coast. I'm not even at the coast. What's going on? Hmm, kiwi. <laughs> yeah, descending rapidly. It's good. Well, not too rapidly, of course. So yeah, I don't know, 500, something like that, five to four. And that over there, straight ahead, in the middle distance, is the mountain I initially thought was the mountain that I was going to be climbing. The very first thing today, this morning, and I am still above its cat, its its summit. Uh, yes. Which mountain is that? Anyway, battery getting low, I'll have to step this up. Here's an impressive sight. Geology throwing up some surprises. Bands of quartz running through this uh, indeterminate rock. This one here is about, this one here is about, I don't know, a foot wide. I'm really here. Uh, Shiny white crystals, quite decorative in gravel, patios, that sort of thing, driveways. Using clocks as well, quartz clocks. I think when you put an electrical pulse through clock, through a piece of clock, through a piece of quartz, it always comes out at exactly a second, something like that. Presumably the quartz has to be the right size. Very good for timekeeping. So I'm nearly done, really. Well, there's a long way to go, about. I don't know, two to three miles still. But if I can make it down to that bottom of the valley there, which is basically just the bottom of this scramble, I can get onto that grass track you can just see there in the middle. And that just leads me on a gentle stroll all the way back to the reservoir and the, the lake where the campsite is. As you can just about make out, I think, in the distance. So I'll be off the dangerous stuff, which will be the important thing, and I can just meander and mosey my way back. And it doesn't even, to be honest, it doesn't even matter if it starts raining apocalyptically once I'm onto that bit. I'll just put my anorak on and I'll carry on trudging. Uh, it's this kind of stuff I don't want to be caught out on. But yeah. I don't know, I've been really lucky with the weather so far today. I begin to think this three o'clock three apocalypse may not happen. But we'll see. That's the same weather report that told me at eight o'clock there was going to be a pyrotechnical storm of, of lightning and thunder and all sorts, which should be interesting to watch if, if that happens. Should be snug in my little one-man coffin, and which I've set up under a tree. Hmm, okay. I might have to go back and do some rearranging. See you in a minute. Ah, having a bit of a sip. More jelly babies. Many jelly babies died to bring us this video. Ah, so there we go, that's the uh, worst of the rubble. Just got this grassy path, it's a little steep here, but it soon levels off. Goes along the side of the mountain for quite some way. And then back to Kyber Pass. Ah, trying, to, trying to remember if I saw any kind of 
coffee shop or tea room or, or costa or, or a pub anywhere near where the campsite was a campsite has a like an open air pizza oven selling pizza so <laughs> yes yes a little wild camping still it's nice not to be, have to be furtive about it all I set my stuff up totally in the dark without using a torch, mostly because I need the practice for being furtive, but, uh, you know, could have just made a big old racket if I wanted to. That's what £10 a night buys you, peace of mind. It's quite reasonable. Quite a journey to get here, though. Uh, all right, more later. Nearly there. Uh, hard work on the knees. And down's a problem as much as going up. Body wants to go down, wants to go down fast. Not, not, uh, not helpful. You know, looking at that, I'm just... <sighs> yeah, I think I know why I take these little videos. Partly because I think other people might find them interesting, but mostly I think it's because I just don't quite believe that just happened. That's quite a route. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that in 12 hours, in 7 hours or 8 hours or whatever. I think I can probably manage 9 miles of Exmoor coastline a day for 7 days. It's rarely that steep. And often there's large sections where you're just walking along a pavement on a beach promenade. So, you know, that'd be nice around now. So, yes. Yes, I'm feeling confident. I've got a month to go before my big week booked holiday and everything so it's got to happen so uh, yeah that'll be interesting madness and here we are again by that weird thing and there's the uh, hut and the trees this rejoins the main track so I need to follow that downhill not too steep and not too jolty hopefully uh, and that'll get me back to the uh, to the campsite. <sighs> Not before time too. That's just about done me. That is today. <sighs> Good stuff. Getting there. Ah, remember this? Uh, that was a happier, more innocent time. I think I've changed since then. I'm a different man. <laughs> hey kids, let's go play in the waterfall. Uh, meh. Sorry, I haven't seen her. Can you help? Uh, uh, yeah, that'd be the, the uh, fatigue delirium creeping in. Oh, creeping further in. Uh, I want to be careful on these trips. I might, might end up finding myself. Can't imagine that'll go well for anyone involved. All right, hold on, home stretch. Really, honestly, this time. Hmm, here we are, six minutes early, rain. <laughs> ah, vindicated, see, trust the, trust the Met Office. And of course I'm actually down in the valley now, the lake's over there, I've just got to meander along the main road a bit, stagger along the main road, back to the campsite. Pretty much done though. Splendid. I'm going to see if there's some kind of ice cream van over at the uh, proper trailhead there. So, uh, that's it for this trip. Battery's nearly out. Thanks for keeping me company again. And uh, look out for more murdering feet soon. See you later.